Oh, there we go. Something big again. Something big. Oh, giant walleye. Oh. oh my God, that's bigger than the last one. What is up, MFers, as you guys saw from the title and the thumbnail in the description and everything down below, we are doing a little bit of bank fishing. We are down at one of my favorite spillways, if not my favorite, the porn stash took me to earlier this year. He might actually even join me. Um, yeah, I'm out here by myself, little solo mission, and we're going after some giant catfish from the bank. She's a little steamy today. Looks good to me. Let's get it. Let's see if I can totally bust my ass walking down the hill here. It's not very big, but what lurks in there is uh, gigantors. Yeah, I'm excited though. I'm actually using what appears to be maybe the most disgusting bait I've ever used on my channel. It's not that gross. It's actually, it's just chicken titties. You know, the, the usual chicken titties, chop up the chicken titties, but I use two different types of Kool-Aid this time. I used cherry and I used mixed berry and it came out looking like a big old nasty black turd. Basically, I just cut them up into our little bite-sized chunks. You guys have been asking for the catfish videos. You love the catfish videos, supposedly. So, we're making a catfish video. You ask and you shall receive MFers. Let me show you guys what we're using, how we're using it. Let's explore this guy right here. So here's my two rod situations I brought today. We got the 7.5 uh, the extra heavy MF rod with the metanium on it. Yeah, I do use my nice bass fishing equipment for catfishing. That's okay also, I'm not bleeding. You'll see what that's about in a second. Um, 20 pound fluoro on that guy. And then this is actually the Zark Special. That's the wizard staff right there. 6'3 bait casting reel. We only got 16 pound test on this one. So I'm hoping that we, uh, we don't get busted off. Now this is a snaggy, gnarly little spillway. We don't need to get way down there with big heavy weights. So I'm just using this little guy. I think it's only like a quarter ounce weight or so. So a quarter ounce weight, swivel, about a foot of line, again, 16 pound test, and then a circle hook. And on the business end of that circle hook, look at this, look how gross these guys ended up. They look like tarry, nasty, so freaking disgusting, but you know, catfish like nasty looking stuff. And actually just, they like the sweetness. That's why we put Kool-Aid on them to make them nice and sweet. I think we're gonna start off just right here on the bank. I'm gonna throw right down there. And what lurks down there is just like over a dozen, I mean dozens. This is where Josh did his catfish spillway GoPro video. Dozens of catfish in this little pool, trapped in this pool right here because they don't want to go back there. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna fish this area here. We're gonna soak our titties. And if that doesn't work, we're just gonna go somewhere else and do it and try to catch big stuff because I want to catch something big today and um, I want to get pulled on hard. Let's do it. Good God, like I was saying, these guys look gnarly at best. Dude, these are actually not chicken titties. These are chicken tenderloins. So we got some chicken crotches today. Chicken crotches. They look like freaking heart black disgusting and i don't know they look nasty i don't know if i've said that enough times let's see what the cats think of them i'm gonna make a super long cast all the way to right there all right i'm there let's catch one i know a lot of you are probably new to the channel if you are i'd love to hit the subscribe button especially if you like catfish videos want to see more of these that lets me know that i should make more but this is what we do i put my drag about as loose as it'll go to where it won't backlash one bite then i put in the pole holder like uh oh the new mf -er rod, the Zark Staff Special, won't fit in this folder. Let's put it in a different type of folder. Folder type 2 test. Boom. And we'll just give her, we'll give her a little Titan action. You know, since my thing's four feet away out there. Yeah. Catfish. So we're going to double our odds and we're going to put that other rod out. All right, so while we're waiting for that rod to get bent, I got to show you guys this new knot. Hopefully you can see it at all. But Casey from Six Cents showed it to me and it's strong as balls. And so that's what I'm using with my catfishing setups. A lot of you probably know it already, but I've been using it a lot lately, having a lot of good luck with it. And I don't break off at the knot anymore. It's called the double clench. You're gonna make about a six inch tag end of your line and you're gonna double it over. So you're gonna put that through the little circle hook guy. And then I like to put my, my pointer finger and my thumb between those two. Now it's kind of weird with the circle hook because the circle hook keeps wanting to grab my finger. We're just gonna wrap it around our main line and our tag line, that doubled over loop, about six times. 
and this is a super simple knot. If you just want a strong some bitch, this is for you. And then we're gonna go back through down by the hook. So we're gonna end up with, we're gonna pull that tight. We're gonna be very careful that we cinch it down just right. And we're gonna do that by looping it up a little bit of spit. And we're gonna keep our pointer finger and thumb on the end that you just put through that last loop. And we're just gonna pull it down nice and firm and tight. And it's all gonna bunch up like that. And so you're gonna end up with three tag ends. Two are gonna be from the little loop you just went through. And one is your original tag. Boom. So we got three tag ends, which I know it adds a lot, but this is awesome. This is, uh, this is a great knot, very, very strong. You gotta make sure it doesn't unravel. It's very good for a lighter line, but I've had a ton of success with now with like 15 to, well, 12 to 20 pound line or 25 pound line even. I don't use it with my braid. I still use my improved clinch with my braid because I have no problems with that, but this guy ain't gonna break even with 16 pound line. All right, we got two rods rigged up now, which is how many we're gonna use today. Throw that guy down over there. And then we're gonna get a little bit more mobile with that guy. Mobile, Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, we're gonna kind of flip this around, see if they're up there. I don't know if you guys have had this. Oh God, we're snagged, shocking. Oh, we're already getting ripped on the other rod. I'm breaking that one off. I just put this rod out and I'm already getting bit on it. And we're snagged. <laughs> awesome. Well, that went well. All right, we decided to go the split shot route because I forgot apparently that it's the snaggiest place in North America, these spillways. So we have almost no weight. We don't have a lot of current, so that shouldn't bury itself up there too bad. But I got bit right away over in that spot, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Holy balls. That is the biggest damn spider I've seen in probably hours, long time. We're not gonna go that way. Never fished this spillway before, but she looks good. Let's see what lives in here. First spillway totally sucked balls. So we're mixing things up. We're gonna explore a new one. Maybe it'll go well. Maybe we won't catch anything, but look at it. She looks good. So we're gonna get a gnarly bluish red chicken titty out there. And we're gonna kind of put that down there. And then I actually, we switched gears a little bit. We brought a bass fishing jig rod and a jig head to put a night crawler on. I went and bought some night crawlers to the local gas station. I don't know, I don't even know if there's fish in here. But for the use, there's one way to find out a members. And I got one immediately. Holy shit, holy shit. I flipped in there and one ate the chicken titty immediately. And we are low on titties. Yeah. I thought it felt like it went right into one's mouth. That was neat. Uh, yeah, let's get back in there. Let's see if that happens again. I'm gonna go with it's not probably going to, but one way to find out. I don't even know if I'm gonna use my bass fishing rods if it's that fast. Fast and furious. Holy balls, that was insane. It was like tick fish running up the creek. Wow. I do got a circle hook, so it wasn't really the best scenario for me to flip it in there and all of a sudden have one. Craziness. All right, well, after the fast and furious start, no dice, so flip that out there. Let's see what else lives in this area. I feel like that was probably a big cat. Oh, one's got it again. Does he have it, have it? No, he dropped it. Much faster than expected, but you can feel one. <laughs> All right, just chill for a second there, buddy. We're gonna try the old jig head crawler action. Again, something I threw growing up a lot. Something the porn stash gets after a lot. Basically just half a night crawler on a jig head. 
catch his ear thing. Got something. I got something. What is it? Big old green sunfish. We're actually going to keep him because we might need his head for bait here shortly. Yeah, I like that. Those guys are awesome bait. That's probably what the catfish eat in here. Big bass in here too, I'm sure. Wall heads. There's everything. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the lake above it has everything, so we caught something. All right. Monkey's off our back. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay. We had a bass. Do the swim jig back there. First cast. Hybrid jig, actually. All right, so there's probably catfish since the titty got bit. We caught a bluegill, and then I just lost a bass halfway in. There we go. What the hell do we catch? Oh Jesus, look at the size of this bluegill. That's a daggum hammer schlagging bluegill right there. Holy shit. That's a big ass bluegill for Nebraska. Damn. That was a first cast down the way. All right, that guy's a little too big for cut bait. We're throwing him back. That's a big one. Okay, uh, we got something big down there just tearing off my freaking chicken titty every two seconds. Apparently we got some big bluegills over there too. Let's see if we can catch some more like that. That was badass. That was right away too. There we go. That guy's not as big. That is cut bait city. Sorry, bud. You should have been bigger. For those wondering, the uh, green sunfish I caught a bit ago, he flopped in the lake. So we're gonna use cut bait because it's gonna stay on the hook way better than Mr. Chicken Titty. And we're not exactly lighting the world on fire with the chicken titties anyways, except for they're getting bit every two seconds. Yeah. There he is, Mr. Gillian Head. Fresh meat. Wow. Fresh hook too, apparently. All right, time for some cut baits. Cut bait versus chicken titty challenge. Oh my god, which one works better?
okay. What do we got here? <laughs> yeah. Put on the old six cents underspin, got ourselves a wall head. A nice walleye too. Honestly, one that we should probably keep, but maybe we won't do it this time. I'm probably gonna be kicking myself if we catch a bunch of these, but that's a really nice solid like 17 inch walleye on the old underspin. Okay. All right. So we got walleye in here on the rocks. Thumped it right there. Probably the worst camera angle of all time. Yeah, that's fish. It's not what we're after, really. We're kind of trying to catch like big catfish, you know? Whatever. Hashtag bonus fish. Another one. Another one. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's a big walleye. Oh my god, this walleye is freaking giant. Oh. This is seriously a big walleye for this small body of water. Look at this thing, guys. Oh my god. That is a giant. You bet. You bet. That's the biggest walleye I've caught in a long time, guys. That's a tank. Tank Zilla. I don't know how long that guy is, probably 27, 28 inches. I don't have a measuring device. Let's measure him on our Melican fishing rod, then we'll kind of we'll take a look at it when we get home. But that is a uh that's a tank. Man, I am freaking jacked about that. I think we got something figured out too on the old swimming jig let's do this though the old zark rod very rough measurement it goes about an inch past the blue on there holy shit probably like the worst camera angle ever but look at this long walleye just caught this tiny spillway and we're definitely getting this one back in there she's been out for i don't know not very long Definitely not like the fattest walleye, but every bit of 26 inches probably. It's gonna release back in there. Kick, baby. Oh, yeah. So I just switched up to this bait right here, the underspin with the swim bait on the back, and it's made all the difference in the world. Honestly, it's probably what I should have started with um, from the very beginning because it's exactly the conditions I like to throw this in. This is an awesome bank fishing bait. Uh, it works extremely well in areas with a lot of rock, a lot of current cast it out, wind it in, um, or I even like to, to fish it really, really slow. Fish it like a jig and just drag it on the bottom. But year round, day in, day out, an underspin with a little swim bait on the back is such a great bait fish imitator. You guys are constantly asking me, you know, I'm stuck on the bank. What do I fish this time of year? This is a bait that works year round, especially in areas like this. We got a spillway coming in. We got a lot of current right over here on this bank. Um, a lot of current eddies and, and, and some steeper, nasty, rocky bank. Of course, a square bill or something like that would be great for bass, um, but for all different types of species, this guy gets it done for me freaking year round. Of course, I'll link it all down below if you guys wanna go check it out, but um, that was an awesome walleye for this little tiny body of water, but I just started throwing this, so I think we might be able to get another one. Let's try. On the old mf -er Zark rod, that's what I'm throwing this on. Honestly, I'd, I'd probably rather throw it on like a seven foot medium heavy, but I thought it was gonna be catfishing the whole day today. Um, this is totally catching me off guard, but it also makes me think we're probably going to be able to repeat this process if we keep throwing around those riprap rocks and just walking all the way around it. Damn. You know that's not the biggest one in here either. Come on. Commit to it, big girl. Oh, oh, look at that swirl. That was not a snag either. That was a damn fish. Oh, man. Let's catch whatever that is. There we go. There we go. Oh my God. Would you look at that? Another wall head. They must be loaded in here. It's not even the time of year for these guys. And they're biting. That's the smallest one of the day, but hey. I'll take it. I'll take it. Bet. Oh, there we go. It's 
something big again. Something big. Crushed it. What the hell did we get? Oh, giant walleye. Oh, oh my God, that's bigger than the last one. Oh my God, look at the mouth and head on this thing. Oh. Yes. Guys, look at the size of this freaking walleye. Oh my God. Amazing fish. I'm trying to lose him. I'm trying to lose him. What a tank. Oh my God. Uh, yep. There's fish in here. I might need to come back. Let's get a very proper size measurement on this guy. To the tail. To there. So he's probably what, guys? He's probably two inches above. That's such a janky way to measure. I realize that, guys. But I wasn't planning on catching freaking giant walleye today. This is easily the best walleye fishing day I've had on my channel before. Size-wise, anyways. We want to protect this fish, though. She already doesn't have a big area of water to live in, but okay. Okay. Not the healthiest eye ever, but okay. Back in you go. Wow. That is incredible. I am caught off guard today. Other spillway with the damn Dead Sea. We can make a move and we get that. Okay, back home. The official guesstimation Zark Rod measuring board system thing. Put them to the end. So, like I said, the first one was about an inch past this mark up here. So that's probably like 25 and a half. Second one, I think, was probably to about two inches. Maybe more, so 26 and a half to 27 inches. Pretty damn good walleye for a little tiny body of water. I was totally taken back and surprised by that. I knew the lake that that was pouring out of had some walleye in it, but it's not really known as a walleye fishery. So to go out there and catch two freaking, the biggest ones I've caught the entire season, fishing it in the middle of a bluebird day, no clouds, sun's high in the sky, not really feeding conditions in the middle of the day. The day totally turned around. I was starting to think I'm not going to catch anything on my damn chicken titties, which I didn't. I kept having bites out there in the middle. Almost made me think it was potentially big walleye eating those. I don't know, but they were mouthing it. I was pulling that underspin by the middle of the spillway and they were thumping it, but just they're kind of just bumping into it. You could tell they were good fish though. Using those rocks as current breaks and feeding right behind them, the, they just crushed the freaking underspin. You guys gotta freaking let me know though. You wanna see more spillway stuff? You wanna see more bank fishing stuff? You wanna see me go back to that spillway? Go hit the subscribe button and drop a comment right down below. Had some fun out there today. Didn't spend a whole lot of time fishing, but I kind of saved some for next time. And I got an exciting video idea coming for you guys tomorrow. So uh, thanks so much for watching this one, man. My first, I'll catch you very soon.